Hello, we are going to talk about Coulomb's Law. Coulomb's Law, it wasn't until I was a little bit older that I really came to appreciate the power of this. Oh, and I'll let you in on something. This is used in physics. <laughs> in all honesty, really, chemistry at the foundation is going to be physics, and physics at the foundation is math. Just don't tell that to any physics teachers, okay? We want everybody to think that chemistry is Ichiban, which it is the coolest, but um, physics really at the root is where everything is explained for chemistry. And Coulomb's law is essential for that, especially for atomic structure. Now we can use Coulomb's law um, if we're looking at photoelectron spectroscopy, ionization energies, lattice energy, um, anything that deals with charges and distance. So let me show you Coulomb's law. Here it is, VE equals Q sub one times Q sub two divided by D squared. Now I've labeled all of this for you and I wanna explain it to you. VE is just the potential energy. And remember potential is, the potential energy is an energy of position. So it's the position of two charges relative to one another. Q stands for the charge. So you're going to have one charge compared to another charge. And it's the D, distance between those charges, that's going to relay our energy. Now mathematically, I want to look at this just a little bit. Notice that the charges multiply. Notice also that they are in the numerator, okay? Now the uh, D, the distance, is in the denominator. So here's my question for you. If we increase the charges, let's say I go from a plus one to a plus two, what happens to the potential energy? Well, it doubles, it doubles. So the greater the charge, the greater the potential, the greater the potential energy. Likewise, what if I increase the distance? What if instead of, check this out, being nucleus, remember there was my positive with the electron, the negative, there would be my two charges I'm looking at, the protons positive, electrons negative. What if I go from the first energy level to the second energy level? So I increase the distance. So I'm going to increase the distance, increase the denominator. What happens to the quotient? What happens to the potential energy? Well, it decreases. The bigger the number in the denominator, the smaller the potential. So there is a, um, there are a couple of really big takeaways from this. Um, let's do first, simply looking at the numerator. The greater the charge, the greater the potential. And the math will tell you that, the greater the potential. Um, Coulomb's law is also going to be on the AP reference. This is really a great law just to have memorized. Um, second, really big, big takeaway here. The greater the distance between the charges, the smaller is inversely related, the smaller the potential energy. So the greater the distance, the smaller the potential, the smaller the potential. Uh, so, if we're thinking about photoelectron spectroscopy, we put x-rays into this, and an electron is removed from the first energy level, an electron is moved from the second energy level, this is what I know. Because that second energy level is further away, it takes less energy. It's further away, and I think mentally, because sometimes um, physics and um, magnetism can be difficult for my brain, I literally think of magnets. The closer the magnets, the greater they attract. The farther away the magnets, the less that they attract. And we've all played with magnets. You bring magnets close together and you can feel them pulling. You have them further away and there's not the same pull. Same thing here, and it's that potential energy. It's Coulomb's law that does that. Now, I do wanna show you another application. So here would be um, photoelectron spectroscopy or ionization energy, that energy to remove an electron, that's just what PES is, rather than just valence electrons though, PES can remove any electron, not just valence electrons. Um, another really big application is looking at our formula units for ionic compounds, when we're talking about lattice energy. Um, so there are two things that you go to. And guess what? It's embedded right here. Number one, you look at the charge. Number two, you look at the distance. So the bigger the charge, the greater the energy because the um, proton and the, the proton is attracted to the um, charges. It's 
um, protons of the two atoms are oppositely attra um, attracted. Um, so you're going to have the greater the charge, the greater the lattice energy. Um, and if they have the same charge, then you have to go to distance. And it's the smaller the atom, the greater the energy. So let's look at this. And I want to first jump into number one, I go to charge. So this is if we're looking at lattice energy. Lattice energy. And number two, we have to look at distance. So let's look at charges first. Number um, we a magnesium is a plus two, calcium is a minus one. Or excuse me, chlorine is a minus one. Uh, calcium is a plus two, chlorine is a minus one. Sodium is a plus one, chlorine is a minus one. So I'm trying to find which one of these salts is going to have the greatest greatest energy. Um, first, go to charges. Well, sodium uh, chlorides are all the same. So minus one. That's like a fixed thing. I don't even have to think about that since they're all the same. I have to look at the cations. Sodium is a plus one, calcium and magnesium plus two. So this means that sodium will have the weakest. It would be multiplying one times one compared to two times one. These two, because of those positive twos, will have twice the potential, twice the attraction happening in that lattice um, energy. So this is the weakest because it's only a plus one these trump because they're a plus two okay so now i look at charges between the magnesium and the calcium they're the same they're the same so that was step one looking at the numerator charge so now step two we look at distance and remember what we said the closer those charges the greater the potential that means the smaller the atoms the closer they can pack the greater the potential uh, so if we look at the periodic table let me show you this You'll recall our trend as you go down the periodic table, atomic size increases. There's magnesium, there's calcium. Which one's smaller? Magnesium. It has a whole energy level less. So magnesium's the smallest. It's going to have the closest distance, in essence, to that chlorine. Um, it can pack closer. Um, and when we put other magnesium chlorides next to it, they can pack closer, so you have this attraction between them. Uh, between the formula units, because this is smaller, it has the greatest potential energy. And that's because the distance is smaller. Smaller distance, greater potential. So if I were to list this from <clears throat> strongest to weakest, there's your strongest, second strongest, third strongest, all using Coulomb's law. First you look at char charge and then you look at distance. That is for formula units. Again, when we're looking at atomic structure, the closer the electron is, the lower the energy level, energy level one, n equals one compared to n equals two. The lower the energy level, the greater the attraction. Uh, so there's a much greater potential between electrons in energy level one than energy level two because those electrons are closer. The smaller distance, greater potential. Okay, good work. I hope you like Coulomb's Law as much as I do. Have a good day.